In today's quick Thursday tip, we're gonna learn how to create a large SharePoint list in PowerShell. And the reason we're gonna do that is to make your Power Apps and Power Automate testing easier, right? Because a lot of times you wanna test those functions like delegation and such, and you need a big list. So I'm gonna show you how to make that in just a couple quick minutes. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, in today's show, we're we'll talk about creating large lists in SharePoint Online using PowerShell. Now don't fret, you don't need PowerShell skills. I'm gonna give you everything you need. I'm gonna spoon feed this to you. I'm even gonna put the script down in the description so you can just copy and paste, right? But the reason I'm doing this is because I know that when you're building Power Apps and Power Automate, sometimes it's really nice to have large lists available, right? Maybe you're trying to understand delegation better, your filtering options, you're like, hey, I don't know what my performance problems are. Having these large lists in place with a nice simple data set just gives you a quick way to test things. So that's what I want to concentrate with on today's video. So let's we'll switch, switch over to my desktop and take a look. So over here on my desktop, I've already installed PowerShell and I've got the window open. I'm assuming that you kind of have a little familiarity. If you don't, I've got some different videos uh, that will show that. I'll put some links below on my like intro to PowerShell video. And then remember to install the Patterns and Practices PowerShell. You can just jump over here. I'll put this link in there as well. And so this is Microsoft-led project. And so it's literally, you just go install module SharePoint PowerShell Online. You've got the bits and you can do these things, okay? So once we've got those things, what I wanna do is I need to first connect. So what you're gonna do is you're going to run this. You're gonna say connect PMP Online URL and then your SharePoint URL, right? So in my case, it's Shane's Cows. And we'll say use web login because what's gonna happen then is it's going to basically invoke my browser and my browser's like, oh, I got a cookie for that site. And it's gonna give it back the cookie so I didn't have to log in. So your mileage might vary a little here depending on what different authentication mechanism, mechanisms you have in your environment. But because I've already done my uh, multi-factor authentication in my browser, this will just worked. I'm like done, sweet. And if we jump over to our SharePoint site real quick, we're gonna see over here that we do not have anything, so site contents. And so I don't have a list named test right now, right? Because this would all fail if you already had a list with this given name. I have test UF, but not test. So we should be in good shape there. So we're gonna open this back up and I'm going to, we'll run these kind of one at a time. So the first command right here is we're gonna do a new PMP list, title is test. If I wanted to change this to, I don't know, let's call it, Oh, you, got, you can't just click in there. You got to kind of go back. So if we want to change this to video test, no big deal. And so then it's using a template generic list, which is just a plain custom list. And there you go. That has been created. If we go back over here and do a refresh, scroll all the way to the bottom. There it was. Video test right there. So it made our list. Easy peasy. So then now that that is created, I'm going to run this line of PowerShell paste this in. So this is going to add a field. So I want to add a field to the list. Right? I need a couple columns to make this work. And so right here it says list test. Remember we just changed the test or the list name from test to video test, which was really silly in hindsight because now I got to fix all these. But so video test and then type. So this is a type of column. And so we're going to use a text column. I'm going to call it color. The internal name is color and it's going to add it to the default view, right? Kind of continues over here. Perfect. We'll hit enter. And so then that added that field to it. So then I've got another one over here real quick. I'll paste in one sec. All right, we'll paste this in. And I cheated and I went ahead and fixed all my names. So now that one says video test. And so that's been added. So there you go. Just like that now over in SharePoint, we have got a full on list with all these things, right? So if we click on video test, title, color, animal. So boom. And now I just made those text columns. So someone on Twitter said, hey, how do I make different column types? So there is documentation for that. And so here in the, the code, they're like, hey, here's the different uh, types. So this is the type parameter we were just passing. And so you can click on this. And then this link shows you, oh, if you want to make it a choice field, right? That's, you know, the word is choice, right? Computed. And so you'd have to work through the syntax a little bit different with some of those more complex ones. But the idea of this list, I'm not trying to make a list to use for production. I just need to create a list to dump a lot of data in. So that's why I didn't overcomplicate this. And I've been using this list, I call it giant, but I've been using this list for years. So then now, this is the more confusing part, but good news, you don't really have to care about it, right? We're gonna copy this in and I will do CLS so it comes back to the top, right, for clear screen. So if we paste this in, oh, it is mad, what did I do? 
wonder if it's mad because I did um, weird spacing. Let me just copy this. Let's just try this again. I'm going to take the spaces out. We'll copy. Let's paste this again. Control C. There we go. I, now I think it's happier. Okay, so then that's our script here. We'll just hit this again. We'll do CLS, put it back at the top, right? Even, even while scripted demos, I've done a thousand times, I still find a way to screw up. So what this is going to do is it's going to for i less than uh, i less than or equal to three. So it's going to do it three times, right? And the key here is that the first time you make this and you're troubleshooting, make a small list. And then once you prove this works, then rerun the script for 25,000 items. And when you come back, it'll all be there. But here you can see I'm using the commandlet called add PMP list item. And so the, uh, the values title equals item title plus this. So that way it's going to say item title one, item title two, item title three. So I got a little bit of difference there. And then color, I'm using a get random function and I'm going to get a random color between blue or red. So that works out for me when I'm trying to test things. I'm like, hey, I want to know that's returning about half the data set. I can choose blue or red. It won't be exact, but it'll be roughly half. And then for animal, I'm using four different animals with that get random function. So I know if I query to only give me all the ones that are dogs, then you know, HUA will be happy with me, but B, it would be like 25% of the data. So just little things like this, by making my fake data kind of have a purpose, it's gonna make my life better. So let's hit enter, we'll let this run. And the reason, you know, it does take a little bit, and I think about it's writing out items, and so clearly three ran really fast, but 25,000, which is really my goal, to, to do some of the testing I wanted was, you know, it, it took, I don't even know, hour, hours? I don't know, I just ran it and went to bed. But this is, uh, you know, now that we've done this, what we can do is look at that, there's our data. So we got one blue, two reds, we got a cow, a horse, a zebra. Yes! So there you go. Now if I wanted to rerun this, I could be like, hey, you know what? I, now I wanna get uh, more items in there. I feel good, it does everything I want. So then maybe I just go up here and be like, all right, well, you want to get fancy? Let's see if I can do this on the fly. Because I want to start at four, right? And so I think what I can do is say four i equals four. And so then we'll do less than um, 10 or less than or equal to 10 i plus plus. So I think this should make us six more. Cross my fingers. Ha ha, look at that success. <laughs> I was a little nervous. I usually don't ad hoc like that. but. But you get the idea. So then now over in SharePoint, we've got 10. And so honestly, at this point, what I would do is I would just delete this list and then I would just go back in, rerun the script. And so then now what I would do is instead of saying, you know, 10, I just change this to, you know, 10. Oh, not that. So I'd hit up and I go change that 10 to be 10,000. And then, you know, like I said an hour, hours, I don't know, just depends on a lot of things. But I could have this giant SharePoint list. And so then now I can test my data. So hopefully that helps you guys with that. Um, a couple other things that people asked when I was talking about this on Twitter was they also said, hey, what about if I wanted, um, instead of pulling in like this, I wanted to import from Excel. I've got a video for that. That'll be down in the description as well. So you can just take an Excel workbook, load in all the data from that and stick it into SharePoint or into SQL or into Dataverse, right? So a lot of different options available there. Um, but yeah, these are just, you know, and once you kind of understand and break down the principles of the script, you can do a lot of fun things that having this list built ahead of time, right? Don't build it when you need it. Build it today and just leave it sitting out there. It just helps you, right? If we look over back in my site, I believe mine is called Giant, right? And so there's Giant. And so in this one, it sits there. It's got 2,700 items. So it lets me do demos of large data sets or, or test large data sets really fast. All right, that's enough for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I put out a short video like this every Thursday. And then on Mondays, I put out a long form video. So two videos a week for the price of one subscription. What's not to be loved about that? And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.